and for the first time ever, the NASCAR Xfinity Series is going green at Circuit of the Americas. And we've had some action. Jeb Burton might have got a little bit, got a little bit too high, maybe in three and four. Uh oh, uh -oh. Now, oh. now this might bring the yellow. Jeb Burton, he's stuck right now. And Jeb Burton goes Jeb sideways. Burton's gonna get the oh. inside wall. Ooh, that's big damage. Man, the last few weeks have been crazy, and it's not slowing down anytime soon. Luckily, on my way to Nashville, I was able to take a day off with my dad, clear my head, and have some fun. We went to Discovery Park of America, a 100,000 square foot celebration of innovation across science, transportation, technology, and yep, you guessed it, agriculture. This place is impressive. Thank you so much. Yeah, from what I've seen so far, I could stay here all day. Well, you know what, you can. So what's the background on Discovery Park and, and why did y'all create this place? So Discovery Park has been here since 2013. Um, it was the vision of Robert and Jenny Kirkland who wanted to provide a place where uh, both children and adults could experience things that would inspire them to see beyond is, is how we say it. So there's some race cars over there. Let's go check them out. So uh, Robert Kirkland was very passionate about uh, cars. And so when he started Discovery Park, he put together a transportation exhibit committee. And those folks would meet and decide what kind of cars best tell the story of transportation in America. The, the race cars behind me tell a slightly different story because those you know, talk all about uh, racing through the years, which uh, is certainly applicable to you. So Jeb, if Scott will allow us to go over, I'd like to look at the inside of that car and you and I compare what you're in now versus what I used to drive. They look a lot different. Well, let, let's make sure security's not around here anyway. <laughs> let, let, let's go check it out. Yeah, how much different they look like compared to what you're in? It looks like a hunk of junk compared to what <laughs> I So, I mean, everything was a lot different, but this car looks uh, identical to what I drove. So the cabins that, that are um, in this section of Discovery Park came from all over this region. They were all taken apart and put back together so that visitors can experience um, what life was like in the mid-1800s. So, Ward, I understand that you've actually restored some cabins and lived in some cabins over the years. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I didn't know where my life was leading in the early 80s. I went and lived out there and lived off the land for two years or so. Got a real connection to things like this. I'm hoping I maybe live long enough that I can go back. <laughs> yeah. Our ancestors had it figured out. We've got it a lot easier than they do, but you know, they had needs of shelter and food and commodities like agriculture to survive. Much simpler life, obviously a lot harder life, but I'm not sure they didn't have it better than we got. One of the cool things that we still do in agriculture is we still provide food, we still provide shelter, we still provide fiber for people to live in today. Have you guys seen our new ag exhibit called Agriculture Innovating for Our Survival? We have it. We need to go check it out. Tell me about the exhibit we're in now. Yeah, so uh, this exhibit is called Agriculture Innovating for Our Survival. We wanted to come up with a way to share with our visitors um, all the types of innovation that go on in providing our food, fuel, and fiber today. Folks like Todd were very helpful for us in being able to figure out what stories do we need to tell and how do we need to tell those stories. Yeah, so I, I think one of the exciting things for us is being able to help educate the, the broader public about where their food and fiber and fuels come from today and the, the innovation that we're doing to be able to take care of the land and, and sustainably be able to take care of the land and the soil. You know, I, I think everything that you see within the exhibit here is, is, is part of the story in terms of how agriculture has changed from the, the plow and the mule to what we have of, of equipment, um, what we have of, of technology, what we have of computerized technology to be able to help our customers our farmers continue to, to do more with less. Are there some things that haven't changed in agriculture? You know, the first thing that comes to mind to, to me is that agriculture and production agriculture is still hard work, Jeb. Um, you know, and 
there's there's a lot of risk still involved in agricultural production. That's one of the things that Nutrient Ag Solutions tries to do with our customers and work with our customers is to help eliminate some of the risk and help to be able to create better opportunities for our customers to be able to have success and, and really um, make some of that hard work pay off better in terms of what they're able to produce and how efficiently they're able to produce as well. Yeah, so I, I think one of the neat things about our partnership here at Discovery Park as well is not only are we partnering here to, to help educate people about agriculture, but we're actually neighbors. As you look over here, this is where we operate our retail facility as well as a distribution center. And a, and a fertilizer terminal to service our customers and the, the area needs of farmers. So um, this has really been a nice partnership with, with our company and Discovery Park. I really appreciate you uh, spending time with us, Scott and, and Todd coming over, spending, spending time with us, talking a little bit of agriculture. And looking forward to spending more time with you tomorrow. But Scott, thank you again for Absolutely. showing it's, us everything. It's been fantastic having you guys here. Come back anytime.